Hey everyone, welcome back to part six of this series. And in this one, we're gonna be looking at how we can organize our data to work with our different SaaS customers, because obviously we've got one application, but we can have hopefully thousands of customers for our application. How are we gonna actually organize that data for all of those different customers? So first and foremost, we need to start with a data type that is gonna cover all of the different types of customers. So in other words, it's gonna store the data about your SaaS customer. So it may include their billing information, it may include their, the plan that they're on, if we've got different plans for different levels of our application. And so we need to store that high level information first and foremost. And so I always call this a SaaS account to differentiate it from anything else rather than just call it account or whatever. I tend to call it SAS account so I know what it means. Okay, and for now we'll just create a name field. Type text. So in our bubble app, we have a single database and that's what we call a multi-tenant database. And we call it that simply because we have one database, but in a SAP environment, we have multiple customers all storing their data in the same database. So here's our database here, and we've got customer A, B, C, D, and E all accessing the same database. So all of their records are all held in the same place, again, multi-tenant. What we need to do is to make sure that when customer A is accessing their data, that customer B, C, D, and E cannot get at their data. Okay, they can only get at their own data. And in Bubble, our lock mechanism is privacy rules. Now, privacy rules are very, very powerful in Bubble and very simple to set up, actually. They are one of the, the main benefits for actually using Bubble's database. So let's say that we've got three different types of data table. We've got an inventory, we've got customer, and we've got transactions in our database. And what we need to do is to have a way that each record, each inventory record, each customer, each transaction record is linked to a particular SaaS customer. So in other words, every record knows that it belongs to SaaS customer A or customer B's records belongs to customer B. Okay, And it's very, very simple how we do that. As mentioned before about the SaaS account type, we have a SaaS account field on each and every type and then each record has to be assigned to a SAS account so it knows which customer it actually belongs to. So in our customer type, what we'll do is we'll create a new field for SAS account and link it to the SAS account that we just created. And that way, each customer record knows exactly which of your customers, your end customers, your your end users have access to which data. And we do the same on every single type. Okay, so I'll just do one more, just do inventory on here for now. Okay, now obviously when you're creating these records, you will need to store the, the SAS account on there. And we'll go through in a moment how you'll know which is the right SAS account to use. But what we can do then, is we can then use privacy rules to, to automate that process for us, rather than us on every single search, every single data query that we do, having to say, limit it, limit the, the list that the user sees to the SAS account the, to the relevant SAS account, what we can do is use privacy rules to automate that process for us. Now, before we have a look at that, we've got to look at how we set up individual users on our system. So in terms of users, let's say that we've got user A, B, and C, and they all belong to SAS customer A. So what's the workflow involved in that, in terms of setup? So what we would do is, user a would be the first to sign up that would be the the system admin the system user will log in 
go into the, the website, will sign up for an account, and then when they sign up for their account, their user account, because they're the first one, they will also put in the company name or whatever, and then that will set up a SaaS account, a customer account. And then to get user B and C in there, what they will do is they will send them an invite, which is done via email, and then each user can then click on a link and say, yes, I accept this, and then they can get signed up as a full user in the system, and then they have full access to the data for customer A. And so what happens then is that the system knows that each user is assigned to a particular SaaS account, and therefore when they log in, the system will then know via privacy rules which data to show them and that mechanism is done again by storing a SAS account field on the user type so as I said the user logs in we know what the SAS account is because it's stored on their SAS account field and then we know via privacy rules to limit the data that they actually can get at to just the particular customer or the SAS account that they are assigned to so as mentioned before, we can set up our privacy rules. We have to add a SAS account to the user type. So let's create that field. Okay, and now we've got that on the user type, then what we can do is use privacy rules around the SAS account that's stored on the user to then determine which data they can see in all of the other types. Okay, so let's have a look at customer first of all. So we, what we do is we, again, select the privacy tab, define a new rule, and we will just say, we'll just call it SAS rule. Okay, now what's really important here is this, where it says everyone else. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put a rule and a condition that says that only the data, only the customer data, for the current user's SAS account can be seen. Now, obviously, once that rule is in place, anything that's rejected by that shouldn't fall through into anything else. So this here, where it says everyone else, is still all these boxes are ticked. We need to make sure that they're all unticked because otherwise that will still filter through to everybody else if they were left ticked. So effectively now, everyone else can see nothing. So therefore, to be able to see any record, any customer record, they have to meet this condition that we're going to set up now. Okay, so we'll click, so here where you see when, you click next to it, and then what we'll do is we will say that when this customer, which represents the record that the system is actually checking against, it's SAS account, and then we can say is current users SAS account. So like we said before, we store the SAS account on every single type, every single record, and it's got to equal the current user's SAS account. As we explained before, each user will have a SAS account when they sign up, whether they create it themselves or they're invited to use that SAS account. And therefore, when they log in, we know what the current user's SAS account is. And then we're checking to make sure that the customer SAS account is the same one. And that way, we can be assured that only the data that belongs to that particular end customer, your end SAS customer, is seen okay and in this case we can leave all this as it is but you we can refine that later on that's something that we can look at further down the line the minute we just cover in the SAS elements now this particular condition we're going to need to copy it for every single one so I'm just gonna right click and select copy expression I'm gonna go into the inventory do the same thing SAS rule and then we can just paste that in and it automatically picks up that it's using a different type, so it picks it up. So we're not having to define that every single time, okay? There are lots more we can do with privacy rules, but this is what we'll use as the backbone to separate the data for different SaaS customers in our multi-tenant database. So as we were saying, we for this to work, we do need to write the SaaS account to every single record that we create in the system to every type, otherwise the whole thing falls apart. So when we're actually writing the data, which we haven't gone through yet, so I won't go through the details of, of how you're doing that, but when you are creating a new record of inventory, for example, you will assign the current user's SAS account to the SAS account field. 
So in other words, when you're signing the description, the price, the SKU, you will then assign the SAS account and that will the value that you will assign to it that you'll store in there will always be the current user's SAS account. And that way it's automatically done. So we're actually making the process here, thanks to Bubble's privacy rules and, and Bubble's ease of use of creating a multi-tenant database and application into just a few steps. And that is assigning the fields, the SAS account fields on every single data type and on the user, and then having the privacy rules to pick that up to ensure that we only see that data. By the way, I've left all these ticked. I need to obviously untick those as well. So, okay, sometimes I get the question, do we have to do it this way? Do we have to have multi-tenant database? And the answer is, no okay but you're probably going to have to wait until your application is very much galing before you can actually do it and i will explain why because if we look at bubbles website and we have a look at their pricing plans okay on you can see that we've got different levels here. This is if these prices if you pay annually, if you pay monthly, then it's even more expensive. Uh, so if we look at the production plan here. What you could do on the production plan with Bubble is what we call sub apps. Now sub apps enable you to, if you like, fork your application and your database to be separate from the main app that you've built, the main production app that you've built. So if you've got a special customer who doesn't want to be sat on a multi-tenancy database and who wants their own implementation, their own deployment of your app and of the database, then you're going to have to be on a production plan and be paying this kind of money. That's if you pay monthly, if you want to pay over five grand up front, best part of six grand up front, then you can, that's what it costs you per month. Now, by the way, just to let you know about that as well, is that you've got to be on the production plan to create sub apps but each sub app that you spin off for an individual customer, for example, you then have to pay them for the app as well. So obviously you could just go on one of the lower end plans for that sub app, but you still need to pay separately for the application. So it can become quite expensive. So unless you've got thousands of users and you've got some specialist ones who are prepared to pay a real premium price to not sit on a multi-tenancy database, and most don't care by the way, in fact, 98% of people don't care as long as they can get the data and they can get it back fast uh, and privacy rules enables that by putting an automated constraint on every query that you do in your database then that's the way that you do it obviously if you're using a different database which is super base then there are different options available but if you're using bubbles database then to avoid the multi-tenanted one you need to be on the production plan and then create sub apps off of that Okay, so we'll wrap that up there, and thanks for watching this one. I hope that's been useful for you. I've tried to make it as succinct as I possibly can. In the next one, we're going to be looking at another element of data within Bubble, and that's option sets, just so that we can round out exactly how we're going to build our data structure. All of these last few parts have been all leading up to how we're actually going to build the data structure for our app, so that you know exactly what I'm doing, and that it doesn't come as a complete sort of what the heck is he actually up to so that you understand what I'm doing. So to complete that, that process, the next one is going to be option sets. Listen, thanks for watching. Take it easy and I will see you in the next one.